Hi, and welcome to part seven of my PowerShell tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at switch statements. So very similar to the last video, we went, we went over some if, else if, else statements. Uh, this is another type of conditional statement where instead of checking for Boolean values of true and false, uh, we usually use values uh, to check if a statement should be ran or not and execute that block of code. There's also a few other differences uh, that we'll be seeing in this video, um, comparing switch statements to if statements. So we'll be using the same file as we did in our last video here. So let me just put in that file path, which is in my C drive, in data, and in our names file here. And we know that we can get these by, let's put this in our data variable here. Let's do a get content on this. So let's just make sure that this works. We won't do an if statement to make sure that our file path is correct. We're just going to assume that it is correct. And when I look inside of our data file here, uh, I do see that we do have Tim, John, Paul, Mike, and Thomas. And this is an array if we reference a specific index point like zero. We get Tim, and we're actually going to store this in our variable called first since he's the first in the list. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement, and then we're going to create the switch statement that replaces the if else if statement. So here we have if first, and we're going to first check to see if that equals uh, Mike here. And then we're going to do another else if it equals John here. And then we're going to do another else if, if it actually equals Tim. And then we're going to do the else block here. So let's just put some outputs here so we can make sure what line runs. And I'm just going to make my name is Mike. And then I'm going to just copy these lines over here and replace it with the proper name. And then in this last else statement, I'm just going to say that we don't know the names. So if we run this here collectively, we get the my name is Tim because we know that first does equal Tim. So first it will check if first is equal to Mike, it is not. Else if first is equal to John, it is not. And then else if first is equal to Tim, it this is true. So it will write the output of my name is Tim. Now let's actually see this in a switch statement example. So firstly, to declare a switch statement, it's just the keyword switch, and then open and close parentheses, and then open and close curly brackets. Then in our parentheses, we actually put the variable that we want to, um, or expression that we want to evaluate. And then afterwards, we put our conditions that we want to check. So here, I'm going to put Mike open and close curly brackets. And then we're going to put John, open and close curly brackets. And we're going to put Tim, open and close curly brackets. And then for a switch statement for the else, it is the keyword default. So we're going to put defaults there, which is basically any value that we did not specify above. So in the mic, we're just going to copy paste the exact same outputs here. And 
Now we can see that this is a little bit longer, but it's a little bit simpler to read. And in cases of, you might want to use switch statements based on our next example. So let's just run this here, which we get the, my name is Tim. It goes through the switch statement. It's not Mike, it's not John, it's Tim. So it prints out the value of Tim. Now, another thing that kind of is weird in this switch statement is unlike the else, uh, the if, else, if, else statements, once one condition is met, it will still keep checking all the other ones. So in this case, we could actually check it using our count um, example from our last video here. So let's actually do a switch statement on the data.count here. And to do a range of number, we actually have to put it inside curly brackets. So here we're going to do 0 to 4. We still have to do the dash contains data.count. And then open and close curly brackets. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy paste that and change this to a 5 and a 10. And we're actually going to do another one here just so, because we know that this data count, I believe, is 5. So if we do, it won't run this one, but let we know that it'll run this one because it is 5. But if we have this 3 and 7 here, and then we'll have a default value. So if we do a write output between 0 and 4, and then we're just going to put these values here. We're going to put 3 and 7. And then in here, we're going to put 5 and 10. And then here we are just going to put more than 10. Now, if we actually run this, we will see that we actually get two results. We get between 3 and 7 and between 5 and 10, because 5 is between 3 and 7 and 5 is between 5 and 10. Now, if we only wanted one of these conditions to execute, which it being the first one, that it hits, we could simply add what's called a break statement inside of our switch statements, which will basically tell it, once you run this code, break out of our statement here. You don't really have to break out of the default, but I just like to keep it consistent. And now if we run it here, we see that we only get the between three and seven. So switch statements, if you don't have the break, could be very useful or very confusing. If you're not expecting multiple outputs and you are getting multiple outputs, it could be because you're not breaking out of the switch statement. Or in the case that if you would want to check multiple values or multiple conditions, a switch statement would definitely be more of a proper case other than the if and else if statement because that one will automatically exit out once one of the matches. Now in our next video, we will actually be seeing a for each for each objects and some other loops afterwards, which is actually going to make this a lot simpler. Because in this example, where we're really only checking for the name, uh, we shouldn't even really have to check for the name. If we already have the name, we should just be able to go through each item in our file and be able to give out the name. And we will do that in our next video, where we will be covering loops. I'll see you on the next video.